Jared here with CarBuzz.com, and today I'm out at Thermal Raceway in California with BMW on something they like to call Test Fest. It's basically an all-you-can-eat buffet where I get to drive all of the latest and greatest in mini BMW and Rolls-Royce vehicles. So BMW has a bunch of cars lined up in a row outside the track, and basically I can just go up to a BMW representative and ask for the keys to whichever car I want. It truly is an enthusiast's dream day. So I was able to snatch the keys to a BMW X2 M35i, the new most powerful version of the X2, the M2 competition, which has been praised as the best and most agile of the BMW M cars, the M5 Competition, the most hardcore M5 ever made, and the M4 CS, a send-off to the current generation M4. I also grabbed the keys to the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, an ultra exotic luxury SUV that we are going to be driving first. And be sure to check out carbuzz.com where I have a full written write-up of all of these cars, including a few extra that we didn't have time to film, including the Mini Cooper John Cooper Works, a Knight's Edition, which is a special edition Mini, and a classic 1999 Mini Cooper that was never actually sold in the US. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the Rolls-Royce Cullinan out on the road. All right, so even though Test Fest is a BMW event, they have brought us a few cars from the Mini and Rolls-Royce line. So I had to take a slice of the Rolls-Royce life because I have not yet driven a vehicle from Rolls-Royce. So interestingly, my first ever Rolls-Royce is an SUV, their first one ever. It's called the Cullinan, has a starting price of, get ready for it, $325,000 but it is still a proper Rolls Royce. Don't for a minute think that this is just a BMW X7 in a fancy Rolls Royce skin, because it is not. This actually shares the platform with the larger Phantom, not the smaller Ghost and Wraith and Dawn. Those are all a uh, different platform, which is, I think, loosely based on the 7 Series. So does this feel like an actual Rolls Royce? Well. I just told you I haven't driven any, so it's a little hard for me to draw comparisons to some of their other cars, but I can speak to how it feels as an SUV. It's so supple, it's super quiet, power delivery is excellent. It's a six and three quarter liter V12 engine with two turbos stacked on top of that. It delivers 563 horsepower and a whopping 627 foot-pounds of torque. Of course, that's going through an eight-speed automatic. You don't have any fancy paddle shifters or sport modes or whatever, none of that. You just put it in drive on the column shifter and you're on your way. So how does it feel from behind the wheel? Well, the wheel, the steering is just so light and delicate. Uh, I wanna say you could drive it with your pinkies, but that's, that's not generous enough. You could almost blow on it in either direction to make it turn. That's how light and delicate this steering is. It feels great. Power comes on like a freight train, that V12 engine, even at speed the way we're going, you've got the power reserve gauge because Rolls-Royce doesn't bother with anything as, as juvenile as an RPM gauge. You have your power reserve gauge to tell you, I'm currently using only 10% of this mighty V12's power. And when you're underway, we're on a fairly smooth bit of road now, but the way that this thing body controls is unlike any other SUV I've driven. You still get the articulation and the suspension that you'll find in most other SUVs where if you go over like a huge rut, you'll, you'll get that shift from side to side, but the way that it's so soft on the impacts it is really different from any other SUV I've driven personally. And um, we did get to do a little bit of off-roading. Um, we pulled off to get some really lovely photos of this car and to do that we had to drive over some dirt ruts and it handled it just fine. I'm sure <laughs> no owner is ever gonna take this off the pavement, but it does have an off-road button down here if you are ever curious. So you can do that if you want. So does this feel like a true Rolls Royce? I think it feels a step up above Above a Range Rover or even a Bentley Bentayga. Those are just a little bit sportier, whereas this is just 
all comfort. The seat is unbelievable. One of the best seats I have ever been in. All of the materials are still extremely premium, giving you that feel of a $300,000 vehicle. Really is excellent. All right, so we're behind the wheel of the M2 competition. And oh boy, this one that I've got here has the six speed manual transmission. None of that seven speed dual clutch junk. I mean, I'm sure it's fine actually, but oh boy, how happy am I to be on an event where I'm getting to drive a manual transmission car with a good old fashioned stick in the middle and three honest to goodness pedals. So what can I say about the M2 competition? So this is an all new car. Uh, the M2, the base M2 is now out of production. You can't buy a new one anymore. This M2 comp is gonna be the only one you can get. Gone is the N55 twin scroll turbocharged engine. And here is the S55 engine, same one that you'll get on the current generation M3, M4. It's a little less powerful, 405 horsepower, 406 foot-pounds of torque, but it is in a smaller car. 4.2 seconds is gonna be your zero to 60 with this manual. That gets cut down to four seconds flat if you get the DCT. Now, it's not a huge difference um, in terms of zero to 60 times and quarter mile times from the base M2. So that's not why you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to one of these M, uh, competition models. Why you're gonna to wanna to do that is because of all of the other stuff. You're gonna get six piston caliper brakes in the front. You're gonna get four pistons in the rear. They've done all sorts of other stuff to the suspension of this car to really change it and make it even stiffer and more aggressive than a base M2. And the fact that you now have two turbochargers, not a single uh, twin scroll turbocharger like you used to get on the base M2, means that this car is probably going to be more tunable on the aftermarket if that's what you like to do with your cars. And I've been driving this for just a little bit, but oh, it's so good. There's so much mid-range. The mid-range torque is where this thing lives. It's phenomenal, but it's not too overwhelming that you can still get on the power and not worry about that rear stepping out, at least not uh, in any unmanageable way. You've got this steering button here. I had the steering in sport. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into comfort. Mm, it's a little light in comfort uh, for my taste, but it, it, it does give you that little satisfaction when you move the wheel just a little bit, even in comfort mode. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it back into Sport Plus, the most aggressive. It it gets a lot heavier now uh, in that setting, and I, I, I do like it. I've had problems with the F80 cars, that being the M3 and M4. I thought that the steering was a bit too light, didn't give enough feedback. Uh, this M2 is just a smaller, more nimble car, and I, I just really enjoy it more than I've enjoyed any of the larger M cars in the past, and I think the manual transmission might be a part of that. I know you can get a dual clutch in this car, but I don't think I would. This car is just such a joy to toss around, and I, I, this is the M car that I think everybody has been talking about, that everybody should be looking at. I think the M3 and M4 are okay, but this is, this is really the one that you're gonna wanna go for, especially with a six-speed manual. Oh, there's a little bit of slip, but traction control got it for me. Oh, I love the feel of this particular six-speed manual transmission from BMW. It's real snickety, real easy to get it into gear. BMW has never been my favorite uh, manual transmission, honestly. They've been pretty good, but this one is one of the best ones I've driven as far as BMWs go. And this is just the right size of vehicle. I hop in this and I feel right at home as a Fiesta ST owner. I don't feel that way when I hop into an M3 or M4. They just feel a little bit too big. And so I'm driving this car at Test Fest. You know, you're seeing some of the other cars I'm driving along with this. And 
this is just standing out as one of the best. This and the Z4, which is all new, um, you're gonna be able to get that in uh, M40i spec with uh, B58 engine, which is not this engine, it's not as powerful as this, but it's pretty darn close, and it's actually a smaller car with a convertible top. So uh, if you really like the way this M2 looks, but you'd rather have a convertible and you could live without the manual, the Z4 might be something to look at, because I think the Z4, I mean, you don't get the rear seats, you don't get the trunk, um, but it's gonna be, pretty comparable in terms of price. Uh, that's the one thing I didn't mention yet. <laughs> this M2 starts at 58,900, so under 60 grand, but when you start to put some options on this, you can easily get it um, well into the 70s, so you have to be careful with those BMW options because it, it's not hard to get overwhelmed with that. So again, this BMW M2, I came thinking it was gonna be my favorite. It, it is pretty close. I think this and the Z4 have really just stood out to me as classically feeling BMWs. I think they, they still don't have the steering feel that you would get in like an E46, um, you know, or an E39. I mean, eh, it's actually pretty close to the E39. I don't wanna say that. This M2 is just a sweetheart of a car. I really love it. Um, it's one of my favorite cars, um, and although I'm not firmly giving my car buzz scores because I just haven't had enough time with it, this one um, I think is a must-buy. You know, the only cars that really compete against this uh, super strongly are the Audi RS3, which you can't even get in a stick. You know, that's all-wheel drive with sort of a front-wheel drive bias, so hard to really compare it to what you're getting here in this M2. And then you've got like the Mercedes CLA 45. Yeah, that doesn't feel like this either. Not even close. This car is, is just one of a kind right now for 60 grand. I mean, you could get a Corvette or, you know, one of the American cars, but I, I, I think this is just the right balance of power, size, the interior is fine. It's not the best BMW's done, but I like it. I like it simple or I like it really elegant like in a 7 Series and I'm not all for those cars in between. So this M2 is pretty much a must buy from me. I really enjoy it. All right, so this is my first track drive. We're here at Thermal Raceway out in California and BMW has been telling me that this is the car I should be in for the racetrack, an X2, which is an SUV. Maybe I'll be surprised. I've driven the regular X2, but this is the new M35i model. 302 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, 8-speed automatic, all-wheel drive. This should be interesting for sure. Let's see how it does on the racetrack. All right, so now we're racing on the track in the X2 35i. This is an SUV, but it is handling itself decently well here, even on a racetrack. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Power is pretty darn good. Um, I found myself, obviously I am not a race car driver, so I found myself get into one or two instances where I come out of a corner a little too hot, and here we go. I'm gonna see if I can experience that now. There's a little bit of lag from the turbocharged engine, but then once it's on full cam, Oh, it's, it's very powerful, very potent in this little car. Really enjoy it. Uh, the steering is still very light. Um, it lacks a little bit of feeling in the middle, right in the dead spot, but you get it on load and oh boy, it becomes really enjoyable. There we go, we're on boost. We're good, we're coming down the back straight now. Those shifts are unbelievable. You know, even on the base M2, uh, I loved the eight-speed automatic transmission. It's one of the best automatics. I am not shifting it myself. I am leaving the transmission to its own devices, and it's doing really well. And I'm really happy that this car has all-wheel drive. It pushes wide a little bit through these corners. You can definitely feel that it's an all-wheel drive vehicle with a front-wheel bias rather than a rear-wheel drive car. It just doesn't dance quite as much, but I am genuinely astonished that a little tiny crossover is able to do what we are doing here right now. 
crazy hard on the brakes. And these things have been taking a pounding all day long. And yet the brakes still work pretty darn well. Opening it up, I'm getting a little bit better and a little more comfortable with it as the laps go on. I'm able to keep it in that mid zone where this four cylinder engine is just so sweet. It really loves to live in that mid zone. Really nice. The only thing I wish it had was a little more on the steering feel. I'm just not feeling the communication through the wheel here. I wish that it was talking to me just a little bit more, telling me that, oh, you're pushing wide, you dummy. Yeah, I got to do it a little better. I wish that I was getting a little bit more of that. The steering is pretty direct, but it's not a two-way conversation with me and the car. I'm telling it what to do, and it's not telling me whether or not it's happy. So that's the one area where I think this X2 just isn't quite as enjoyable as like a regular you know, BMW M car, but <laughs> the fact that most people are just going to buy these to drive to work every day and back, and they just want the nicest, fastest X2, you know, right, so it can do racetrack stuff. Unbelievable. That's them calling me in. Um, I really enjoyed this as my first uh, lap. Now let's go get into something a little quicker. All right, so this is the M4 CS. So this is the stiffest, most aggressive M4 you're gonna be able to get. Aside from the GTS, they don't make that one anymore. That was practically a race car. 454 horsepower out of this uh, twin turbo inline six here. The DCT is the only transmission choice. You can't get a manual on the CS here. It's not a cheap car, $103,000, but you get pulleys instead of door handles. You get this lightweight stuff on the doors here. Really more of a Spartan feel in here than you would get on a normal M4. So that $103,000 price, you're only gonna pay that if you are the type of person to take this to a track. Zero to 60 in this is only 3.8 seconds. That's really quick for a rear wheel drive car and that's because this dual clutch puts down the power so well. So this is gonna be an interesting one for me, this lap, because uh, the M4 has never been on my favorites list. I've always thought the steering was a little iffy and I don't like the way that the S55 engine sounds. Um, so let's see if this uh, CS model can change my opinion of the M4. I'm gonna be leaving the transmission in automatic mode. Uh, the traction control is off, so we should get some tail happy slides here. This seat, oh boy, it hugs you in. It's a real tighter. I'm a big guy. I don't see if there's any adjustment here. Um, doesn't seem like it, so I guess I'm just gonna be a bit tight on here. Oh, there we go, a little bit of adjustment. All right, so coming on the back straight. Oh, this S54, S55, oh, it's a very powerful motor. You're gonna get the carbon ceramic brakes here. Slam down on them hard. Uh, the thing that I'm noticing in this CS model that I've not really noticed on another M3 or M4 product is the touchy throttle. The throttle response is unlike anything I've felt in a turbocharged car. It's such an aggressive throttle. I really love it. It dances through here. I have it set on the middle steering setting. That's the sport setting. Really nice weight to it in that mode. Not too heavy like it is in Sport Plus. Oh, those brakes are absolutely mighty. And although eight-speed automatics, BMW does really good ones, this dual clutch is good too. I'm gonna miss this dual clutch when it's gone on the next M3. Um, the one thing that I'm really feeling from this CS that I've never felt from an M3 or M4 of this generation in the past is, oh my God, the mechanical grip. The, the tires are just gripping so well on the racetrack. I just floored it through there, mid corner. Shouldn't have done that, but guess what? The car bailed me out. It's just so good under load. It's really hard, Whoop! Oh, see? I just made it step out, but I was able to catch it. It's just a really nicely balanced car. I got a little bit overzealous there with a the slide, but you're really gonna have a tough time shaking the mechanical grip of this car. I don't know if this completely changes my opinion of the M3, M4 of this generation, but oh boy, this CS is definitely the best uh, F80 generation M3 or M4 oh, that I've driven. Pull down the lab here. 
And now they're calling me in for the cool down. They're calling me in for the cool down. Whoo, boy. Of all the cars I've driven uh, today, this is the one that I was able to get the ass out the most on and just enjoy the steering and the and the balance of the chassis and the, the mechanical grip without really having to rely so much on all-wheel drive or fancy computers or anything like that. The M5 just feels really big, and this car is not super small either. I think the M2 is going to be the one you want, but oh, this M4 CS is not a bad car. It is very cool, very cool indeed on the racetrack. Uh, this is definitely giving me a different opinion here on the F80 generation. I'm really curious with a new M3 and M4 coming out what those are going to be like, but this as a final send-off, not too bad as a final send-off, that's for sure. I hope you've enjoyed the video you've just watched. Be sure to check out CarBuzz on YouTube to see some of the other videos we've filmed here at BMW Test Fest. We've tested everything from Mini Coopers to BMWs to Rolls Royces. Be sure to check out our website, carbuzz.com, or download our app on iOS or Android to see everything we've done here today and to keep up with the latest and greatest in automotive news and to see reviews like the ones we've done here today. Hope you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.